Um, here we go. So um, most here we go. Uh, so here we go. Here's our uh, my magnet, and there's my north, and there's my south, and there's my magnetic field. And let's get my wire coming through like that. So the wire's coming out of a page. So uh, let's do Fleming's left hand rule. We have to put our index finger in the direction of a current. So let's say the current's coming out of a page. So that's the direction of current. So point your index finger out of a page. Point towards straight towards you. Point your uh, sorry. Point your middle finger straight towards you out of a page. Point your index finger from left to right, and you should see your thumb going straight up. So the force experience will be going straight up. There's the force. Now let's calculate the magnitude of the force. Okay, let's pretend that uh, this is a huge magnet, so two meters of uh, um, uh, this magnet is two meters across. So the two meters of this wire is exposed. So L will equal two. Um, let's pretend the magnetic flux is five teslas, which is a lot, but this is just an example. And let's pretend the current is uh, 2 amperes. So what is the force? Force equals B I L sine theta. Sine theta. Okay, sine theta here, what we look at is that this, uh, you want to give an angle between the of a two-dimensional angle between the current and the magnetic field. And in this case, actually, it's a right angle. So sine theta, sine is sine 90, which is equal to 1. Which, so we can just not worry about that. So BIL, 2 times 5 times 2 equals 20. So the force experience on this wire will be 20 newtons. Um, these are, of course, unrealistically big numbers. So, But, you know, that's an example. And you can see how easy it is to do these kind of questions. Um, people often ask the question, which direction do I take the angle from? So if I take a top-down view of that question we just did just now, and um, say this is my magnetic field going straight across, so there's my B. Okay, and um, there's my B. And let's say this is my wire, right? So what if the wire wasn't perpendicular? This is right angle of a two-dimensional view. So this is a bird's eye view of a question we just saw. So that's a bird's eye view. Um, so you can see there's a right angle here. But what if this wasn't a right angle? What if it was slanted like that? So the question is, do we take the small angle or the big angle? Well, what's really interesting is it doesn't matter. Because if you look at it on a sine... Because um, if you look at a sine graph, and I'm going to take a shocking attempt to draw one, from... There we go. So that's 0, and that's 180. And if you look at it, if you go, if this is either 10, this one will be here, will be 10 degrees more than 90, and this one here will be 10 degrees less than 90. But 90 is when it's at its peak, which is 1. But if you move either direction 10 degrees, you will um, have the same value. So it doesn't really matter which angle you take. Just take either of the two-dimensional angles between um, the direction of a current and the magnetic field. Um, so that's that point done. But, um, the points are getting faster. Once you've explained it, it's really quite simple. So let's move on to point C. Okay, so point C talks about define magnetic flux density and the Tesla. Okay, so there are kind of two things here. We have the magnetic flux, which is just all over all magnetic flux, and magnetic flux density. Okay, so magnetic flux density is just like density of anything else. It's how much of it you have and how much space. So, um, as you might know, a magnet uh, creates a magnetic field which goes on for theoretically kind of forever. Its magnetic field just kind of keeps on going. But the difference between stronger magnets is that there is more magnetic field in a cer certain defined area. So close by, it might have a lot of magnetic field compared to a weaker magnet which might have very little magnetic field. So the unit of magnetic field flux density is called the Tesla. And this is basically how much magnetic, how strong the magnetic field is inside a certain area, um, which is represented by how close the magnetic field lines are. So, and to get a magnetic, as we know, 
clean that up a bit. So, clean that up a bit. As we know, um, density equals something over area, right? So, what we're looking at is, in this case, uh, magnetic flux density equals magnetic flux over area. Great, huh? Okay, so magnetic flux density equals magnetic flux over area. Um, basically, and then you can go the other way around, magnetic flux density times area equals magnetic flux. So um, if we have, say, a uniform magnetic field of three Teslas, and um, we there's a spans an area of, say, uh, 20 cubic centimeters, uh, we just times them together and we'll get the total magnetic flux. But what you, you probably realize now is the most important thing we're talking about is magnetic flux density. Okay, so if we just take a look at the equation one more time, we'll be able to figure out how we can possibly define something as abstract as magnetic flux. F equals B I L sine theta. Um, sine theta. Okay, so. Um, what if we just rearrange the equation to give what magnetic flux is? B equals F over I L, make my L's capital, I L sine theta. So sine theta has no units. Um, all it is is basically saying you're acting perpendicularly. So what if we could say one Tesla is when one Newton of force acts um, on... Actually, sorry, we don't have to rearrange it. We just have to look at this. So how do we get one Tesla? When this unit is one, obviously the most simple um, way would be for every other variable to also equal one. So we can define one Tesla here as one, new, uh, one Newton of force acting on a wire carrying a current of one ampere uh, over, of length of, uh, well, over an exposed length of one meter perpendicular to the magnetic field. So I'm going to write that down, and this is kind of one of those things you have to memorize. Uh, so here we go. So let's let's go on and define magnetic flux first. So I kind of explained it. We need a formal definition. So for a long straight conductor carrying, oh, basically, right. So um, for a long straight conductor carrying unit current at fix this box. Right angles to a uniform magnetic field. The magnetic field strength B is numerically equal to the force per unit length of the conductor. And this is when we did re uh, rearrange the equation. F equals F over I L sine theta. So this is for a long straight conductor carrying a unit current, so we're just making I1, so to just kind of ignore it. And what you get is, um, at right angles, so that's making sine theta 1, and basically you get F, if you do that, if given that I equals 1 and sine theta equals 1, what you get is B equals F over L, which is basically saying magnetic field uh, is uh, defined as force per unit length, but only under these two conditions, so you must remember that. So that's what magnetic uh, flux density is defined as, or otherwise magnetic field strength, for the same thing. But how do we define a Tesla, which is a unit of magnetic flux? So um, this is how they define it. They kind of just said one Tesla is the conditions that happen when everything else equals one. And here's a kind of written uh, formal definition. One Tesla is the uniform magnetic flux density, which acting normally to a long straight wire carrying a current of fix that. Uh, sorry, carrying a current of one ampere causes a force per unit length of one newton per meter on the conductor. So basically this is saying, again, acting normally, that sine theta equals 1, to a long current of 1 ampere, I equals 1 again, causes a force of 1 newton on one 
Uh, for, it's called a force per unit length, which is what B is, of 1 newton per meter. So this is the same thing, just saying when everything equals 1, it causes 1 newton per, per 1 meter of wire. So that's what 1 tesla does, and that's how the 1 tesla is defined. Um, and uh, lastly, okay, lastly, we have to kind of figure out, uh, that's C done, so you've kind of got the definition there, this is the definition for a tesla. And this one here is a magnetic flux density. Okay, and um, uh, so lastly, we just got to kind of work out this one here. We have to work out the last one, which is uh, the last learning objective we have to do is part D, which is show our understanding of how they kind of get all these values. Like, it's it's fine saying one newton. You got one newton of force acting on a current of one. But how do you actually measure that there is one newton of force? Because we can't see force happening, and we can't really feel it accurately. So how do they do it? It's actually very, very simple. Um, what you do is you take... I'm just going to draw it for you. Um, you take a magnet, like a horseshoe magnet. And this is quite a common experiment. You might run into it when you're practicing your exam questions. So here's a horseshoe magnet. Oh, here we go. Horseshoe magnet. And we place it on top of a scale here. So that's a scale, that's an electronic scale. And um, in between we put a... Uh, change the color of that to make it all more, a little bit more defined. Uh, over that we put a current through, a car wire carrying a current. And over here we'll, we'll have a... Um, we'll have a magnetic field going across. So how can we measure magnetic flux? Basically what we have is we have a wire with known current. Uh, for example, I equals 1, to make it simple. And we have it at an angle which we already know, so maybe sine theta, sorry, sine theta, also theta, also equals 1. So we know that too. And, um, the, so the, what have we left missing? F equals B, I, I, L, sine theta. So we have the, uh, so we have here, we have the, uh, I. We also have L, but L is the amount of a wire inside the inside the uh, magnetic field. So let's just, for simplicity's sake, say L equals one again, one meter. So we have I, we have L, and we also have sine theta. So what are the only two variables we're missing? We're only missing F and B. So if we could find out the force acting on the wire right now, we can also know. Um, what magnetic field density is, just by rearranging, rearranging this equation. So, uh, for um, but what uh, what we uh, probably the easiest way we can do this is what we do is we fix this wire in place so it can't move, and we record this. Uh, we switch current off, and we record the weight here. So we will, this will be the weight of uh, of a magnet just acting downwards normally. And then what we do is we switch it on, and you will see that the weight reading here actually changes, because remember what I said before? This wire will either experience a force acting up or down. Let's say up for argument's sake, um, because yeah, depending on which direction the current's going. But let's just say it, it goes upwards. Um, the, the, the magnet will experience an equal and opposite reaction going downwards, so its weight will actually increase. Um, what if a wire was doing the other thing? What if a wire moved downwards? If a wire moved downwards, a magnet will experience a force upwards, decreasing its apparent weight. So you just do the, um, the kind of weight final, uh, actually, weight initial minus weight final, uh, the absolute difference between that is equal to the, the change in force, which is the change in force is equal, I mean, you know that the magnetic field density is equal to the change in force per unit length. So then you have to do is you have to divide that unit, the change in force, by that length, and assuming that i and sine theta equals one. You can obviously rearrange it however you want with i and sine theta as different values if you wanted to. But you do that, and then you can find out what magnetic field, uh, magnetic flux density is of this magnet. So that's basically an explanation of how magnetic flux density is determined. So sorry this video ran a little bit long, but that's an explanation of um, topic 22.1, which is forces acting on a current con carrying car current carrying conductor. This is the longest um, part of this chapter, so the next videos will be shorter. But um, thanks for listening, and if you like what you hear, please subscribe.